Apartheid really began in 1948, but separating black Africans from the white minority had long been a policy aim. White people officially superior, black majority discrimination, aliens in major cities, radicalizing mass protests, liberation movements, dual reform, Nelson Mandela. So Malik, yeah, nice man. to meet you, bro. Yeah, lovely to meet you too, man. Yeah. Like, Let's uh, do the South African click thing, yeah. There we yeah, go. Man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, so today's the first time we've met. Yeah. Even though we're very different, you know, yeah. we have a very different background. We're both from South Africa, similar age, like mm -hmm. three year difference. And uh, we both sort of experienced some things that happened in South Africa. Yeah. But from a very different perspective, I think, yeah. yeah. I parted in it when I was about like 11. So yes, I, I, I reckon, I think I was, I was 14, 1984, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I was 14. How did you experience, what did you realize? Uh, like? Strangely, Nadia, yeah, it's like, um, I grew up in like the Bantu states. Yeah. Uh, so I was not aware of that stuff when I was like growing up. First, my first time to mm. actually um, become aware of there was such an uh, tension. My mom took me to watch uh, the Steve Biko movie. And I didn't understand what was going on, but it did make me cry. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, what the hell? You know, and then as soon as I step out of the cinema and then I started to notice people around me and, mm. you know, yeah. But it never really affected me that much because I grew up in a predominantly black community. Yeah. Um, and black state, so, well, so-called black state. Mm. We're kind of a lucky generation, yeah. you know, like, People like the age of our parents maybe like will be very difficult for them to be friends. Yeah. You know, from from different races. Yeah. You know, or even different areas. But like for us, we're lucky because we at least got that taste of we can be friends. We yeah. can be like included in each other's lives, you know. And, and and the purpose is only one to show like this is possible. I think with me mainly is to just show the world. But then yeah. you also get this fucking racist, you know, in South Africa especially. Man. <laughs> it's, Honestly. It's 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 horrible, man. Like um, walk in a restaurant, um, say well, I was meant to meet up with my partner there, mm. um, walk in a restaurant, maybe she's already there or I'm there before her, you know, and people will be like, what do you want? Yeah. Sure. You know, instead of like offering you a table, mm. they'll be like, what do you want? You, what's, what's your business here, sort yeah. of, you know? Have you ever had uh, uh, um, any like kind of like racial incidents? Uh, well, because there's also like yeah, black and white and like in Cape Town it was being robbed and it's like Zay Whitey mm. took all my stuff, my shoes, belt. I don't know how racially motivated it, it was. Is, yeah. I think I was more Kalusa like, has money. <laughs> yeah, if you white you got money. Yeah, so yeah. just rob him and get money to go buy drugs mm. or I've always been like, you know, quite um uh, into like pro African sort of thing, you know. You know, and I always step out of it just learning one thing like some people, even though it's like a, a really righteous sort of thing, but some people they have a tendency of um, misunderstanding being pro something mm. um, by being negative to something. Did you get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. It's, it's awful, man. Yeah. Like with my partner, like the other way around now, they're like black on black, this is what I was talking about, like people being pro black but being anti mm. something as well. Like my partner, her parents came to Cape Town. And so I'm taking a shower. I was like, we're gonna lock the back light and lock the door. It left me without a key inside, you know. So I called them like, hey, oh, dudes, you left me inside, man. You need to come pick me up. And the guy's like, okay, cool. No, I'm gonna ask the guy to drive us, you know, because they're pretty far from where we are. And the guy who had a car, the only guy who had a car, he was like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna drive there to oh, open shit. up my brother so he can go and dine with white people. <laughs> like, yeah, wow. You know, yeah. left me there, man, the whole day. What you doing here? Uh, this is the pyrography, yeah. Uh, basically, it's just uh, we burn the artwork. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's a really long process. Yeah, at the moment, I'm doing a piece that I found uh, in a friend's. I'm always on Facebook and stuff. Find it an easier way um, to, you know, just to go back home. It's my way of going back home and visiting friends. Yeah, one of our one of our friends is a he's a Sangoma. He trains people to be traditional healers, what used to be called witch doctors back in the days. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he takes these beautiful photos during the ceremonies. This was in one of his ceremonies. Um, yeah, so if I'm doing artwork in the mo at the moment, I just feel like, you know, doing stuff that I can relate to back home, you know. Yeah. And this is... Do you, do you miss home a lot? Man, I miss home all the time. Oh, man. Yeah, so when I'm doing this sort of stuff, it's quite therapeutic, you know, and... Yeah. It makes you, makes me zoom in and become part of that moment, you know. Like, um, like what I was telling you earlier about, like, you know, the political state of South Africa in the past three years with the students trying to fight for education. Yeah. Because I couldn't be part of that, so the only way for me was at work. Yeah. What's your mom's name? Elet Stoffelberg. Elet. Sometimes and she works. I might have met your mom. Yeah, it's very possible. My mother knows everybody in Cape Town. No. Did, didn't she work for, um, um, what's it called? The War Horse. Yeah, War Horse, yeah. She when your mum interviewed me, mate. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Yeah, my yeah. mother knows everybody in Cape Town. Like. Your mum your mom interviewed me for War Horse. I was really? go, do, do, going to do costumes for War Horse. Yeah. That is crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I've, I've met your mum. Mm. Uh, the, the name just came to, 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 to me. Um, I think there was like the last four, last five people oh, left. Yeah. So now we had to go in there and actually do the things mm -hmm. practically. You know, she wanted to see the skills and, and everything. Yeah. You know, and that's when I lost it. Oh, no. But your mom didn't give me the job, oh, though. No, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> if your mom did give me that job, <laughs> yeah. probably wouldn't have met you now. Possible, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you think you might have still been in there? I might have still a... been there because mm. I was like, you know, a dream job, man, you know. And life just flows like that, I guess. Yeah, everything is mm. interconnected, man. Everything is so, so mad. It's really cool. It's yeah. really cool, man.